You know what I can't stand though is when you have like it, when it's like when it's right in between when you have a jacket on and then it's a little bit too warm and yeah. then you take the jacket off and it's a little bit too cold and you're like god damn yeah. it why well, I don't want to sweat and then yeah. you get cold that's how yeah. I catch a cold yeah yeah I hate sweating in the cold I hate Ugh. that feeling so As, awful these shit used to happen to me all the time in Chicago what's up everybody welcome Hi. to gravy baby. Um, Carmen Morales here. Hello. Lady. DJ's here in brisk weather. <laughs> we were just bitching about the, uh, the wrong amount of colds or the wet colds. Yeah. Oh man. The wet colds, when it goes through you to your bones, I can't stand that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Oof. Yeah. I know I That's say good. that in a warm place while people are in <laughs> very cold places, but no, that's why uh, I pay a lot of rent. Um, so I don't have to shovel snow. But um, so Deej, you got to give me the scoop. So you've talked about um, the prospects. We've talked about the prospects of the garden and stuff like that. Have you made any final decisions on what you're going to grow? And are you concerned about the, since you got goats coming, are you concerned that the goats are going to eat all your shit? Or are you going to keep them well, away? No. Keep it separate. Well, it's going to be, a, you know, we'll definitely be keeping it separate. I think we're going to use this back area. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I know that we're doing, like, we're going to do a lot of like trellises and like we're doing watermelon and pumpkin. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's just a couple of them. But, uh, and some gourds and stuff like that for like trellis, cucumbers, okra. Uh, we've got our pepper start. Um, oh, which kind of peppers? Are you gonna go spicy or are you just gonna go? Oh, doing a lot of spice. Yeah, doing a lot of trying to trying to get some some like some nice habaneros and stuff mm. like that. Just uh, yeah. I, I last year I didn't get a chance to try to can stuff, so like I'm trying to think about some things that like uh make a salsa so back to those things. But mm -hmm. and then uh other thing I think we're just good wanted we wanted to do corn and uh but I, I think we're gonna see how much room we have left. Yeah. So this whole this whole triangle back this like with this space back here is like open for business now. So we're so the possibilities are endless right now. So you, now you're trying to hone down on specifically what you, what you really want. Yeah. What you want to do, what you want to can. My sister was canning all that. She was doing like jams and jellies and stuff like that. She made like a prickly <laughs> pear jelly and uh, she had these got like, a lot of strawberries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Strawberry. Well, they they didn't right. grow up there. She was more apples. Did like apple butter. Mm -hmm. Um, and the process was a pain in the ass. But she ended up like befriending a lot of the farmers, so they would just give her all this excess, so then she could just can all the shit up, make it into yeah. something. And then um, she did a really nice watermelon rose. And uh, she did a white nectarine one that was fucking sick. She also had these like spicy asparagus. She like pickled these asparagus. That was super good. God damn. Oh, see, now that's what I'm talking about. I want to do pickled okra. I'm definitely going to do some pickles, some pickled okra. Mm -hmm. But I'm also trying to see, like, what all, like, with onions and potatoes and stuff like that. Going to do those, and I uh, got those started. Uh, Hell yeah. Hopefully stuff to see how, lo how long stuff can last. Like, basically just using this season to see what we can grow, to see what we can get, and how long we can make it last. Mm-hmm. That's the goal. And to put the animals in. Right. Of course. You ever, I still, I just realized I still have a jar of uh, my sister's canned vegetables, which is a weird thing to keep after somebody dies, I think. <laughs> right? Like, that's not a thing to keep to, like, but it was a thing. I don't know why. Do you, do you, have you ever saved a thing from a person who's not alive anymore? That seems like the wrong thing to save. Uh, no, I don't have a lot of it. I mean, I hope that this doesn't sound terrible, but like, uh, there's not really anyone in my family who that I felt like even my grandparents. Like, mm -hmm. I knew when I was a kid, but I was locked up for so long. 
Like I came out and like met a bunch of strangers. You know what I'm saying? Because I got gotcha. locked up when I was so young. So like I don't have like with my mother and stuff. It's kind of like different, but there was like all this the peripheral, the peripheral. Well, um, even if it was just a friend or something. Like, just somebody that passed away and you save something of theirs that seems silly. Welcome back, Drew. We're talking about, um, or welcome, Drew. Yeah. Saving dead people stuff. I want to say Saving that. dead people stuff. But saving dead like people stuff. stuff that doesn't make sense to save. Like my sister used to do a lot of canning yeah. and make a lot of jams and shit like that. And I still have like a, a couple of jars of stuff that she made that it's probably bad now. I mean, she died a couple of years ago. Oh, canned goods last a long time. Oh, but well, you don't, don't want to eat it, right? Say, my grandparents died. Mm-hmm. Went down into their like into their or the, in their in their their basement where they had all their like canned goods that they've been saving. Mm-hmm. There was so much shit there, dude, and like most of it had mold in it. I don't even know how long they've been just canning stuff, putting it in the basement, leaving it there. <laughs> well, there they go, man. My grandparents did that too. That's like a that was like a um, what's the word? It's, I mean, they did it at one point. Because they were afraid of dying. Starving. Yeah, that's just a de- depressionary right? shit. My grandmother used to always what's, keep things in the pantry. What's the word? Yeah. You, like, you kind of can't stop. A compulsion. Mm-hmm. It was almost like a compulsion for some people of that generation to cam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me say. It's becoming like that. It's I, becoming like that what? I just wanted to say no, to answer I'm, your question about your sister. Mm-hmm. I don't. I think it's like one of those paradoxical things where I think saving anything is weird. And therefore, nothing you save is weird. Does that mean like you? It's like because you seem to be framing the question like there's stuff you save that's normal. Well, sure, this a lot is of abnormal. you know, a Letterman jacket or a, um, you know, but it's just anything a, that reminds you a letter you of. that your a family member wrote to or a card or something like things. Those are things that people save. Well, a letter's a gift that's yours, and they sent it to you, right? Sure, yeah. But the or Letterman a jacket is a perfect example. I realize that's no, been normalized. Through TVs or whatever, but really, it's just anything that reminds you of them. That's why you keep it. I think. I think it's. I think it's normal, unless it was like a box of boogers they had under their desk that you found. I don't. Yeah. I don't think anything would weird me out. Maybe like or like if it's since it's your sister, her sex toy or something. Like, there's very few things that I would say is weird. Okay, my sister was huge in the BDSM community. But you, I would be honored but that, if, but, she yeah. me, if she gave it. If she gave it to you, that's yeah. different. Yeah, I'm, about it. Yeah. I'm saying there's very few things that would weird me out because I think that whole ritual is just this reminds me of them. That's all that is. Right, but I'm saying the thing that I have, which is a thing that I have that reminds me of her, is going to go bad. That's the thing. Yeah, when it goes bad, you throw it out. It'll be weird if you don't. It, but like, also, it won't stink or anything. You'll just be able to see mold in it. Right? Keep the jar. Get rid of the vegetables. Keep the jar. When it goes bad, yeah, do that. He's right. <laughs> Put a picture of her in it. Make it a candle or something. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Do that's, that. a, that's the thing people do, like transform sure. it into something. Mm-hmm. I mean, I got other things. I think I'm just going to let him go, guys. You really made me see the light. Thank you. <laughs> so what you do is you break it apart. You make tiny little necklaces. <laughs> yeah. You get a tattoo, but one under the skin where you put the glass under your skin oh, okay. from the jar. Yeah. yeah. It wrapped. It actually yeah. had the whole and vegetable it, jar wrapped into your skull. Yeah. But put that in the so shape of one of her sex toys. Of it. I'm just going to keep put it in my butt. So it yeah. is a sex toy. It can be. I was right. Everything's a sex toy if you have the right um if you have the right creativity. Imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say attitude. It's it's I think it says a lot about us what word we thought we needed to make anything mm-hmm. a sex toy. To me, <laughs> to me it's attitude. Attitude, ambition. What? As long as you breathe. As long as, as you, long breathe, you gotta breathe, yeah, breathe. You got to breathe. Yeah, I'm not a gaping lady, so it would be it would take a lot of effort. I'm not a gaping lady. I liked that sentence. <laughs> it's just not what I expected. You know what I'm talking to about today. when they can, they can, when oh, can do this. I know what it is. It's just you the can. sentence. I'm not a gaping lady. I'm not. If anybody was wondering, um, <laughs> I poop out pencils. God damn it! Okay, sorry. Pooping out pencils. DJ froze with a very. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you're back now, but you what? were fro- you were frozen with a very meme reaction. Of like, God damn, they're talking about pooping out pencils again. <laughs> I think it's cool to keep mementos of people, even if it does, even if it is food that's going to go bad. Mm. You yeah, think I so? Um, 
I haven't. You haven't. This is new for you. This is the first person you've done this with. Yeah. I said it's cool because, like, I've heard, I've like seen people who do it. I guess I realize I've never done it either. Yeah, I think I, I just also try to keep it light because I moved around so much, mm -hmm, so same. I didn't, um, I didn't really collect things like that. I also haven't lost anyone that wasn't old who I was super, super close to. Yeah, I think I yeah. still like I still have some postcards she sent me. I still have like other things. Yeah, but yeah. That's the uh, other thing. That's my, another. Yeah. What? Hey, wait. No, no, you go ahead. You just froze, so I only heard a one word syllable. Am I freezing up now? You're good. You're, You're just a little jittery. Uh, I was gonna say that. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I could see if my younger brother had passed away. How like I, I could see myself, my younger brother. I could see myself holding on to a, to a jar of soup. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And being like. Oh man, that's my soup. That's, that's Wesley soup. Hmm. No. <laughs> Wesley soup. <laughs> oh. It also seems so silly when you put your hands in your armpits, though. Oh, that's yeah. Wesley soup. <laughs> oh. it, it may be too it late now. Oh. Is he a, is he a soup guy? Is your is your younger brother is a soup guy? Yeah, he does all that stuff. He does all kind of arts and crafts and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah, beware if he just, you know, uh, he always liked Campbell's, so I always keep a can of Campbell's uh -huh. around. Oh, it was just his last bullet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Don't throw that away. That's uh, my brother. He was going to eat that. <laughs> yeah, he, he wasn't going to. Oh, man. Here's one. This one's weird. This one's always bothered me, actually. Um, The car my brother drove around. It's just a pile of rust beside the trailer where he was living, which is where my his son now lives. And when my mom was going to get rid of it, his oldest son, who at the time was like 11, was like, what do you mean you're getting rid of that? That's my dad's car. She's 11. Right. He doesn't know. But that moment had such an effect on my mother like it's still there that it's still there like her Ugh. not her not wanting to f it's like yeah but he's not 11 anymore right he probably wants it gone he's probably afraid to say it to you now he doesn't even remember it. he probably thinks you're the one who wanted to keep it around you mm -hmm. know what i mean that's that's always like made me really sad that like she didn't get rid of that car because of the way she felt the day the 11 year old told her not to get rid of that right car. yeah that's always unfortunate i mean and that's also because he was coming back in the 11 year old's mind it was like he's gonna need that when he gets out oh um, and it's like yeah you can't explain to an 11 year old that he's gonna have to get a toyota this is an oldsmobile it won't make it 15 years so <laughs> <drive away. laughs> my mom's oldsmobile lasted for fucking ever uh, honestly it's an oldsmobile cutlass too they do last forever this one had just been used yeah, as a literal say, meth like, car what, what year like yeah. one year, you could probably just fix it with like one wrench. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like those old, old, all the little cars, all the little trucks mm -hmm. like that. I drove it for a little while. I think I've told you all this story, but maybe not. Um, I drove it for a little while, and one of my coworkers saw me when I was a public defender in it, and she was like, "Mr. Drew, that's a drug dealer's car." <laughs> And I said, you Literally. are exactly correct. Literally. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think I'm going to get rid of them. I think that's the... Can you eat them? Move. Are they too old to eat I now? think they're too old to eat now. I'll call my mom and ask her. It probably depends on what... So I think five years for most stuff. Yeah, I think they're too old to eat them. Oh, it's been more than five years? I thought you said a couple, my bad. Well, no, she's been gone a couple, but I think but these... Yeah, she had them for a while. She might have had them for a while. Um, and the, I did, the jams and jellies, I don't think they last as long. They, well, they like solidify if they don't mold. Even if they don't mold, they'll just turn to like sugar crystals. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to remember my sister as mold. <laughs> so I feel like that's probably a time <laughs> to leave it. It's not moldy. It just sucks. Yeah. Like, God, she sucked well, at this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this tastes like shit. <laughs> yeah. That's fucked. Mold's cool, though. Oh, I knew he's gonna get into it. Here we go. <laughs> People sleep on mold, man. I no, like no, mold. No, I know what he wants to get into, and I do too. Tell us about it, dude. 
Oh no, we're not gonna get into it. No, if you're wondering, you if can't you're wondering do that. About... You can't start off with molds cool and then not get into it. Tell no, us, it is cool. tell us no, about the that's aliens. That's not what I was going to talk about. Drew wants me to talk about space fungus. Yes, I do. We don't have time. We don't have time. Okay. (laughs) DJ, (laughs) we tried to literally describe the future of the planet in 30 minutes last week. I think we have time for you to at least tell us what space fungus is. No, we didn't. You, we at least have time for you to tell us what space fungus is and where we think it comes from. It's it's in the it's in space. The fungus. Listen, (laughs) you go to space, you gonna get a fungus. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> That's not yeah. like space space leets. So, yeah, like, like, what are you talking about? What kind of fungus? But like, if you go in space, no, Cosmo cock. Your toes start <laughs> cauliflowering up. What do you mean? No, what do you mean? There's no, mushrooms I, in space? I, no, I'm over here for myself. No, no, no. <laughs> there was a, there was a. Uh, oh my god! How do I explain it, dude? There is, not was. There I don't is. know. How, I don't know where to start, other than the fact that, like, there has been science. So, a Hoover. I don't know where to begin. I don't know where to begin. I swear, it's a it's a fungus that can get into you. That has been found on stuff, been found on material that fucking probably killed a lot of people, and the and the government has kept it under wraps. I mean, and there's and there's somewhat proof. Behind this, the cosmonauts and fucking CIA and crazy shit. Okay, it's just mm-hmm. crazy. It's just madness. That's it's, it's, it's talking about Soviet era, fucking Cold War, fucking shit. You know, they were. We're talking about we're talking bunnies. about bio warfare with a fungus base. And is the claim that they found it in space, or was that part you just hit, and it has nothing to do with space? Yeah, no. It's, yeah, it came back from. It came back with people that they had sent. In the space that came back. So there's a About new conspiracy back the day, theory. Back in the day, we had actually worked with uh, we'd actually worked the Soviet Union for a very very long time undercover with their space program, mm-hmm. right? I think that's true. Shooting shooting like fucking people out out here just just all right. You know, didn't know what they were doing. Didn't know what they were signing up to. Right. Just send awesome. them to space. Probably a lot of flames and huh? Just sending people to space. Yeah. Yeah, it worked out right. I mean, like probably a lot of slaves, a lot. Uh, are you a are lot you, of? Uh, are, are you? Do you mean like from the American slave trade? Are you saying that there is a conspiracy theory that involves us going to space in the 1850s? No, right. I mean, Drew, we we got slaves down right now. They're okay, I just, want, I just wanted now. to make. Okay, I just wanted to make sure no, 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 the no, way no, you not, said not, it. Like, we we but slavery has been long, around for a long time. You know that everybody. Like, yeah, it's hell, not an it's not an American invention. Well, yeah, yeah, with yeah, you, yeah, yeah. But yeah. we were talking about the like, okay, sorry. Probably it probably came around probably from Morocco, probably at that point in time. Well, I don't know, but I'm just guessing that they weren't gonna send Russians or Americans and just put them in a fucking whatever kind of tin can that they had made and shoot them out in the fucking space. You know what I'm saying? But right. they but but th- but they was certainly send like Poor people and and right. it's the or uh what it anyway and so someone came back I, with some fungus on them is is the theory hey look man I ain't never been a spike all I know all I know is word on the street you know what all I right. mean what's, all I know is what's well, yeah, I know. I'm just trying to understand what what the theory is yeah. not if it's true or not yeah we're not so, holding you to this we yeah, just no, no, don't no. know what it is so somebody went to space they got fungus yeah, on lot, them in space oh, wait, yes. they came uh, back and then they collected the fungus and now they've been trying to grow it as a bioweapon no not doing any of that they had to kill it they actually had to kill it you know what I mean this is actually that oh, they it, they tried it, to stop it, but it, it, it's hard to stop. They did stop it. Okay. They they did stop it or stop some point of it. Probably a whole bunch of it on the ocean floor. You know what I'm saying? Who mm. knows? You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, so it's just a wild. I, you know what I mean? Like, I have two. I have two problems with it personally. Okay. One is the idea that the governments worked together to stop a thing that's bad. I just I don't see that at all. <laughs> no, I agree. And, yeah. then, and then and two, turn it into a bit. Yeah, and then two. Then, this is literally the plot to a science fiction film, the name of which has escaped me. 
fungus coming back from outer space and infecting people. I it mean, was that's, a, it was that's a, Last I mean, of Us, too, is, is a fungus-based. Fungus yeah, it wasn't but from yeah, outer space. But, but, like, that's where it all comes from. That's where it's all. I mean, Godzilla is about nuclear weapons. I mean, we all, we it's all, we all tell, you know, dude. That's fair. Uh, yeah, everything's everything is based on reality. So, yeah, man. Probably, and also, if this conspiracy theory is old, we just hadn't heard of it. Mm-hmm. The sci-fi writer might have got a hold of it and then made the art out of it. So, all right, you've you've fixed my main hole in in your thing. Still hard for me to wrap my head around Americans and Russians working together to stop something bad and and not and yeah. not fucking go on TV and take fucking credit for it. Yeah, but maybe. Well, I mean, they were doing awful shit. I mean, they were doing terrible shit during the space program. Right. They didn't want to take credit for it because they didn't want people to know. By the way, the way this happened is that we were sending Moroccans up to fucking Uranus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all that's fact. All that's fact. Like us working with the with with uh, with the Russians and like fucking and and the space program at the very beginning and like this all this other stuff. Like that's a fact. Yeah. Totally doing that. Yeah. Then it started becoming competitive. That's when it was like. yeah, Yeah. 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 And they say that a lot of that, when when it broke apart, had to do with the fungus that was coming back on, you know, that and they it's found. deadly. That's the issue with it. Yes, like a like one of those things that the uh, like uh, when the bird poop goddamn uh, on the cricket and the cricket gets his mind fucking fucked up and then the fucking the bird eats it, some bitch, and then fucking goes back up and poops, and then, but all that, you know, what is it actually the the the, the yeah. brain worm? Thing yeah, the paras- got? it's got like a parasitic relationship with yeah in a circle. I can't remember that either. I know that um, yeah, so it's there's like a cat that. one so too. Something- yeah, that's what cat ladies are. Did you know that? I'm sure you did. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that there's a the parasite, parasite makes the cat shit, and then that makes the ladies want the cats more. It's like the parasites controlling all of them. Mm-hmm. There's a word for that. Yeah. yeah, that shit ain't that shit don't work on me. No. But also, you're immune. No, I can't. No, I just don't keep the poop around long enough. Nope. I think people who have multiple cats, it's like harder to keep the uh, the poop box clean. But yeah, that's mm-mm. how they that's how they get you. Yeah, no, nope. that's that's they the don't parasite get me. I hate that smell. Taking over. I hate the people. smell of ammonia. Caca. Yep. I hate cats as an entity of pet ownership. I I respect them. They should live outside and be free. No, I dig them. You just got to clean the box. Fuck that. I don't know. Or just, teach them how to poop in the toilet. Or just let them roam free and murder mice and be a badass tomcat. Yeah. But then you get too many of them and you, it's like the island where there's too many cats and then there's no other no other animals. That's only if you're feeding them. Are you watching Wild Things, Producer Mark? What the fuck was that? Um, Here we go. Fungi. Creepily. Oh, this is from last year. So this can't be that old. Fungi creepily infiltrates space stations. Boom! Got it. Space fungus. I knew it. Space fungus. Fungi piggybacking on space missions is dangerous to astronaut health and spacecraft equipment. That's us taking it to space, though. With no friction in space due to the lack of gravity, the space... The spores simply just float away. This is why astronauts aboard uh, Mir Mir witnessed large fungal formations seemingly all over the spacecraft. This is like um, it's like it's proving him right. You know, I mean, it's like the more you read about it, it's like oh, that's what we were talking about. Mm. Click at space dot com link. Go ahead, DJ. So that that was here recently, but but whatever was. However, that was growing, and whatever happened to the the cosmonauts or the whatever you want to call them, the okay. the apparently pretty fucking nuts, man. Well, this well, this one's referencing something that happened in 1988. It feels like your story goes back even further than that. But what's wild about this one is people on the mirror realized something had blanketed one of their windows from the outside, dude. That has got to be the scariest moment. One yeah. of the scariest moments in the history yeah. of humankind. If you don't know what it is. You're just floating through space and you're like, I can't do it in Russian, but you're just like, hey, buddy, look at this. There's something on the outside of this spacecraft. Ooh. You always think of yeah. space being so vast and like you're va- and alone, but there's just so much shit. Well, it's also scary because that's what it is. It's like you're so afraid of being alone because that's what's scary about space, right? It's empty. It's desolate. It's death everywhere. 
And then you find out when that gets across the window, you're like, that's actually way scarier. We well, yeah, something's <laughs> th- <laughs> <let> something's <laughs> thriving out here. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. yeah. See, I feel the opposite of that. Like, I don't feel like it's empty. I feel like it's full. Like, I feel like you're in, like, like being out there, you would be like suffocated by the fucking, just the absolute fastness, dude. Right. Just like the absolute total fucking, ooh, scary, dude. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Uh, I think we're saying the same thing. Just <laughs> That's how I feel too. That noise you made is exactly how I feel. <laughs> well, anyways, yeah, this fun right. guy had managed to adapt to space environment and so well that it not only survived, but thrived on windows, control panels, air conditioners. So it was like anything it touched, it was like, oh, I'll just live here forever. It even contained the crew's precious food, contaminated the fu- the crew's fresh precious food and water supply. Although this incident was the first time a fungus was found significantly damaging uh, the space station, it was not the last. This started in 1988 when astronauts um, were now uh, the retired Russian space station Mir realized that something had blanketed their windows from the outside. Weird. Yeah. yeah. I don't like this. This is not gravy, baby. <laughs> I, I usually like mushroom gravy, but this one sucks. <laughs> this is your uncle's mushroom. Oh, mushroom stuffing, stuffing yeah. yeah. But I get it. Fuck that shit. Um, Ill. Fungus, man. You're really God. turning into Egon. I will say that, DJ. You're turning into Egon. I collect spores and fungus. That's one of the Ghostbusters, right? Yeah. DJ froze. Is that not a? Do people not know that reference anymore? No, I think so. Okay, I was gonna say it's even out in the new I just, one. I just wanted to make sure that that's who Egon was. Yeah, it was a me making sure I got it right. Yeah, it was like the the receptionist, the nerdy receptionist, is like trying to be all flirty with him. She's like, it. "What are you doing in your spare time?" And he's like, "I couldn't. I collect spore or spores and molds and funguses." Well, as as usual, once DJ gets too close to the truth, <laughs> Big Fungus comes after him. He's frozen so hilariously. Please, I know. <laughs> please cut to him for the YouTube, Mark. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think there was a film over his uh, camera. We've lost him. Big Fungus is struck again. Mm-hmm. They don't like when we tell the truth. So do you have anything that's gravy with you? You got any good news? Uh, no, I have no good news. Zero good news. I have good times. I have good gravy though, you know? Yeah. What? Like what? Man, it's, it's, uh, it might be corny, but I don't care. Uh, just being outdoors. I went, I went skiing for the first time in a long time. My buddy took me. That's skiing. Uh, Yep. I know. I'm not much of a skier, but I went. It was fun. Uh, then I walked everywhere in Denver because it was like beautiful, but cold, crisp day. I like to walk when it's crisp. Mm -hmm. Just great. Just great being in the sun. Just being outside, man. Yeah, I know you say it's cheesy, but it's like physically, like it's been scientifically proven that you Maybe put hack in... is the right word. Yeah. Sunshine. But yeah. Vitamin D, you need it. And but exercise. also the grounding thing. The yep. grounding thing. And the air there smells fresher. Well, it is. It is literally it? is fresher. Yeah, there's trees there. Well, Denver's a big city. You it... still might be right, but I feel like it's like something to do with the coldness. Don't you think but cold you were air skiing feels in fresher? the city? Oh, no, no. I meant the whole time, but you're well, right. That's what, yeah, I'm talking about. You're but not definitely skiing in up the city. On the mountain, yeah. yeah. When the, the, the air is literally better there. It should smell better. It's thinner. <laughs> it's thinner, too, so you're kind of dizzy. Ooh, ooh. Oh, dude, one time we went, uh, I, when I went skiing for the very first time, I was a little kid, and um, I wasn't even, we weren't even skiing. My dad wanted to take me to see snow, is what it was. So he took me out of school on like a Thursday, of course, because he was manic. And we just started driving north. No plan, no hotel reservations, no nothing. Um, no that, cell phone back then either. Nope. So it's not like those were easy things to figure nope, out. Just a Rand McNally in the back seat of a Ford Ranger. <laughs> Dude, I didn't think about how much manic people loved Rand McNally before they had phones. Mm hmm. Oh, Get yeah. me a fucking atlas. Yeah. <laughs> we just go north. Yeah. It's like, who's buying these things? Truck drivers and people who look like this. Yeah. Yeah, the real go-getters. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we drove up north to Sugar Mountain, Tennessee. You know where that is? I think that's in North Carolina. Is it? Could be wrong. Sugar Mountain, North Carolina? No, Lookout Mountain. That's yeah, what it was. Yeah, Lookout Mountain. Lookout Mountain yeah. is in Tennessee. Um, we went, stopped there because it was the first place we saw snow. I think it was like... It was like February or March or something. And we stopped there 
and we're driving up to to go to like a look a, a lookout. Yeah. And my mom, is, both of them are smokers at this time. And my mom's a very large chested woman walking up the thing. And me and my dad, because again, I'm like 11. So I'm like springing up. I don't need a lot of oxygen. My, my poor mom. Is, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what's wrong with mom? And he's like, oh, she's just in awe of the mountains. She's never seen the mountains before. <laughs> Meanwhile, my mom's just staring at him with fucking daggers like, fuck you. <laughs> Cut to Carmen that, like on the on the kids' soccer team the next year. It's just like, I guess I'm just in awe of soccer. I don't know. Because I now have the wrong impression of what that phrase means. <laughs> <laughs> but she was just like, I can't fucking breathe up here. That's funny. I was born at sea level. I can't do this shit. That's extra funny because look how mountains like probably 2,500 feet. Not even that high. Yeah, the Rockies are like, you know, Denver itself is 5,000. Yeah. That's why I have to be careful when I drink in Denver. Good people of Denver know. Yeah. I mean, I went slow because I know, but I forgot about the fatigue aspect of drinking in Denver. Oh, yeah. It weighs a lot more. Yep. And then I went skiing. My last show, dude, I was I was like exhausted. It felt like the last show at the end of a 14-day run mm -hmm. instead of a th three-day run because mm -hmm. I'd skied and had like four beers that day with no nap. Last time I went skiing, I hit a tree and I, and oh, I stopped. I, I stopped. Uh, it that's, was okay. That's it, dangerous. Yeah. That's what killed Sonny Bono. Yeah, I know. But if I didn't hit the tree, I would have fallen off a 15 foot embankment. So the tree was the better option. Where I were just you fell. skiing? Uh, West Virginia. At Snow at like, Mountain. At like Bob's Ski Resort? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was, I don't know. I, I didn't like, I fell and then hit the tree. Like it, I didn't yeah. hit it full force or anything. Obviously I would have, I would have suffered more injuries, but yeah. um, no, I was just going too fast Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I couldn't stop. And then I started veering off and, and I, I'm not a good skier. Again, I, I'd skied once when I was a kid and mm -hmm. this was my second time skiing. So, and it wasn't a bunny slope. It was like just the one that was closest. And I didn't realize it was a real fast one. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> it was funny. If you like falling over, it'd be funny. It was funny. I'm watching you get back up. Oh yeah, for sure. On skis. I was laughing too. Yep. I was laughing the whole time. Yeah. And then he took a picture of me. I'll, oh, I'll airdrop it to producer Mark. He took a picture of me, my legs up in the air and shit. It's pretty hilarious. Do it later. Do, Do it, it later. later. Oh, I mean, I don't care. We don't care. I don't um, give a shit. <laughs> it was funny as hell, so it don't matter to me. Yeah, I only fell once. Did you ever go skiing when you were a kid, though? The first time I ever went skiing was, uh, I was in high school, 16 or 17. My mom and her friend Kim had some sort of educators conference in at Snowshoe, West Virginia. Yeah, that's where I was resort. doing a show. Probably the same exact resort and everything. Yeah, and... Uh, it like it, mom was like it costs nothing if you want to come with me and if you want to ski Kim her friend she was a teacher but like also a coach like like Kim was like a um women's basketball all American oh wow okay and a super athlete mm -hmm. so that's who taught me to ski and she knew a little bit about it but my funny story from that we we went like out on my skis for the first time and. She was like, you don't need to pay for lessons. I'll just tell you the basics. You're an athlete. We'll figure this out. Oh, wow. Okay. And she was like, give me some pointers. And we were kind of going down the top part where you like literally leave the lodge. Mm -hmm. And we were talking to each other and she's watching me and tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And like, she was like seemingly mostly right. You know, it's like, okay, I'm not great, but I know, I understand what I'm supposed to do and how to like turn and dig these things in. Yeah. And I just like, knew the pizza. So then she's telling me about pizza. Yeah. And as we're moving along talking, we realize right at the top, you could go one of two ways. Mm -hmm. And the way we went was a black diamond with moguls, Ooh. which for people who don't know is like the steepest one or whatever. And it, we look and it's like, fuck, it's like 50 feet back up to <laughs> climb back up. And she's like, listen, I was teaching you about the pizza, just pizza the whole way down. Cause, cause this particular black diamond was clear of trees. It was for okay. moguling. Uh -huh. So it wasn't it, it wasn't like dangerous. It was just a fast hill. Okay. I'm like, cool. And at the bottom, there's a wide like place to ramp, you know, to plateau to, chill, to slow down. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, I know what the plan is. 
pizza, snowplow, go slow the whole time. Hilarious. <laughs> Look at you. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see what we're doing. If you're not, hey, check us out on YouTube. <laughs> what I'm looking at is a red skin. Honestly, it looks like someone who died on um, <laughs> the way up to Everest. Because all I see is a ski, a jacket, and a stick. Yeah, that's me. I'm in there. Because um, I fell into the tree. Like, it was all snow, and then I fell in yeah. the middle of the tree. I yeah. didn't hit the the, bar, the you know the bottom. You destroyed some animal's home. <laughs> some animals burrowed up in there like, what the fuck? They woke up from their uh, hibernation, and they were like, what happened to the roof? <laughs> That's great. Yeah, sometimes you, it's too steep. The pizza don't work. So I was pizzing for the yeah. first time ever in my life. What I didn't know was like, your skis naturally, the way they're designed, mm -hmm. don't want to do that. Mm -mm. So I still, I just, I straight lined this black diamond. I don't know how fast I was going, but it was freaking me. I know there's no trees around. It's not like I'm about to wreck, but I am terrified. Again, I've been on skis for 150 feet my whole life, and mm -hmm. now I'm probably doing 40. Yeah, and it's freaking me the fuck out. So I'm like, well, I'll just slide. Like I'm, the, the, I'm gonna go down to end this. So I drop down. As soon as I hit ground, I pop straight back up, and then flipped end over end with my skis going many different directions. <laughs> this guy, you pulled an e brake, yeah, going forty, literally on your feet, yeah. you dummy, flipping end over end. This guy <laughs> skis up to me, and you flipped over handlebars that weren't there. And then my mom's friend Kim, I mean she's my friend too now, gets there at about the same time. And they're checking on me. They're like, are you right? How's your head? Your arms? Can you move them? You know, they think I have fucking damaged myself. And mm -hmm. then this guy goes, and later I realized this is the funniest thing in the world. At the time, I was like, what? He goes, where's the other guy? And at first I was like, did I hit somebody? And then I realized I wrecked so wildly mm -hmm. that he thought I hit somebody. Him watching me flip looked like two people. Yeah. Like a cartoon, you know, like when they spin and fight mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, when it's just a cloud of dust and you just see like a foot and a hand and stars. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I will say since I didn't get hurt, I think it was the coolest thing that could have happened to me as far as that week goes because it was like, all right, well, that was fine. You know what I mean? <laughs> no more black diamonds, but I get it. Yeah. I had like, I was like real good at the bunny hill and then real good at the one after the bunny hill. Like that's like the first real one. Blue something like that blue and then and then i don't remember who it was like some kid i did the little snow training camp with was like i want to go on this one and i was like oh, okay and then i went on that one and i was like oh this this no no this is too much yeah it's too much cuz I, I didn't know how to do the cut you know yeah. like we did chop chop and chop and chop but the, i could only do the pizza and the pizza could only slow you down so much i went pretty regularly in co in law school and I would, that seems I like could a do like, law school thing to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Blowing lot snow, of, baby. A lot of double black diamonds mm. up in Vermont, and I was okay at them, but I didn't have fun. It was like, this is just work. And then Mark's making the face, and I know what he's doing, and I was about to talk about this. I, j this one, West Coast, the Rockies, their blues, I was like, I wasn't wrecking or anything, but like I was working my ass off to go a speed I liked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my buddy was like, yeah, you're, you're an East Coast blue. And I was like, oh, right. It's like steeper here. And there's like a very, he's like, yeah, the system's off. He's like, mm. they're claiming it's a blue, but it's not really a blue there. But they have to say it's a blue because you got to have the levels or whatever. Yeah. And so apparently I've never even really done a double black diamond because I did it on the East. Oh, okay. But I mean, I, I I did a West Black Diamond once this weekend. To me, it was just exhausting. Because to keep from going a speed I didn't want to go, I was having to like dig my shit in real hard. Yeah. And also beers, elevation. I mean, my buddy really wanted me to go. Thank you, Tom. You're a great host. He paid for me to go. But like, we did like five runs and he was like, you want to go get a beer? And I was like, yeah. And then we just ended up drinking beers until the mountain was close. <laughs> Well, that was always where I found my mom because my mom was like, fuck this. She got bad ankles anyway, so she wasn't into it. So she was always down at the little cottage at the end, like getting hammered, making fun of the fucking snow bunnies that were in there. She's like, look at these fucking bitches. I thought Andy was super into it when we first got together because all of her friends in college would go every weekend to snowboard. Mm -hmm. And then I found out Andy would go with them all the time and then just sleep all day. 
mm-hmm. while they were out doing that, and then just get in the hot tub with them and party all night. <laughs> Because like, she was like God friends damn it, of friends. I love your wife. I know she was like friends of friends. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, you, you're a snowboard chick, and she was like, oh no, I hate that shit. I was like, I never I've did seen the snowboard. pictures of you, and she's like, nah, I don't go on the mountain. I never did the snowboard. I've done it once or twice. Here's what they say: they say it's harder to learn, and then once you learn, it's really easy because it's smooth and it's just easier to control. I didn't have enough patience to get past that hump when I was there for three days with my friends. I can see how it's more fun because you get so much more control or whatever. But there's apparently like a top limit to it. Like apparently no matter how good you get at snow you get at snowboarding, skiing you just have so much more control over it, you know. Mm. I don't know. Okay. I want to snowboard. <clears throat> I've tried a few times to learn and I've gotten I mean, okay, just, but I just fall a lot. I just wasn't good at sn- uh skateboarding, so I didn't think I would be good at snowboarding. I was mediocre at skateboarding. Well, here's what I say to people. Is I, I guess own a skateboard. we didn't know our producer, Mark, was a ski bougie bitch. Oh, right. He's from upstate New York. Mark just put up a picture of him jumping a jump. Wow. Mark, do you do the uh, tellies? Do you tellies ski? No. I'm just Mark's telling What's us the he's doing another... Is that where you have to like slalom, solemn? Or it's sl- where the where heels s- aren't attached. Mm. And so it's a different style. And you have to basically do lunges to control it. And it's it's exhausting, but apparently you feel like you have more control once you learn how to do it. No, more I'm control good. over like the direction. You can cut sharper. Oh, okay. It's real hard on your knees. Yeah, I just want to be able to slow the fuck down. And you the do... pizza only does so much. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I got to where I could turn, but even that. Is, he, is, is I'm DJ 40. not coming back? Nah, fungus got him. I'm on. <laughs> even that, he's lost in the fungus. Like being almost forty, it was like there was one moment where I was like, "Man, I've got this like it's cramping or something right here in my knee." And mm-hmm. then I thought, "Or your knee's about to quit, blow out, you're done." So that was like a I, like. The last time I went skiing, I, I had a different brain. Does that make sense? Oh, sure. Like the man brain that takes a long time, way too long to go away. Mm-hmm. Invincibility. Fuck it. Oh, yeah. You weren't skiing with your dick. I get it. I, I was not skiing with my dick this time. And, was the fr- and I haven't been in a long time. It was the first time I wasn't skiing with my dick. There was a part of me also when we went back to the lodge. I was just like, yeah, I'm finally not anxious. That was fucking awful. <laughs> it was fun, but it was scary. <laughs> I hope I don't like I don't really want to lose that. Me either. It made me a little depressed. Yeah. Um, but maybe it's just the kinds of things. Like that to me just seems I mean you're going forty on two little Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think also I I feel like if that maybe I was like that the in the past when I've gone, but mm-hmm. I've gone for two or three days at a time. Yeah. But I just need to get my comfort level back up. Because I, cause I tell you what I was afraid of. I was going to run over somebody. The one I only Yeah, felt, that's the other thing, too, is there was too many people mm-hmm. when I hit the tree. It was either me hit a person because they had like a they were like lined up. Yeah. Like, a, like, why are you skiing next to each other? We're all but not not everybody's got the same speed, whatever. And uh, so we were I was just going too fast. I was like, I'll just I'll just hit this tree. I only fell once this weekend and. I, we had stopped to talk and when I just kind of took back off and then mm-hmm. there were two people right in front mm-hmm. of me and I couldn't get around them. I had to just go through the middle of them and then I was trying to slow down and I just kind of spun out and fell on my butt. Yeah. And that's the only time I fell. But anyway, yeah. Hitting people is what freaks me but out. But I love the two. I love kid. tubing on, on, on ice or I mean, you could you could oh, launch my yeah. ass into space on a fucking inner tube. I don't give a shit. Wow. I don't know why it is specifically on skis. I'm un, I'm nervous. Because you know that your leg might go that way and your body might go that way. Yeah. And that could happen on the I don't tube, want my twat split. But it doesn't feel that way. <laughs> I got like joke overload. Okay. <laughs> I was like, all right, we got to wrap it up. I do got to wrap it up. <laughs> well, thanks for swapping ski stories with me. I'm sorry we lost DJ. At least we got to hear about the, the garden a little bit in the front. Um, guys, thanks so much for listening us. We love you. We appreciate you. Join the Patreon if you don't mind. Patreon.com slash gravybabypod. And we'll see you next week. I got Nashville and Bristol in June. Um, 
It's funny. I always imagine someone writing us in. You know, mm. like I always like to put my mindset in the like in the mind of a hater who's listening. Mm-hmm. It's like every time Carmen's not here, all they talk about is death and destruction. But as soon as we live DJ, it's fucking skiing and all this highfalutin bullshit. <laughs> I had no idea that you'd ski before. If you would have, I would have. I don't know what amount of money. There's no way I would have thought you'd skied before. I would have thought you'd have been like, that's it's driving five fucking hours. And I mean, I didn't. I went as a kid and then I went because I was doing a gig. Like, so you wouldn't have if I'm, you weren't doing yeah, a gig. Yeah, I'm not. I, I like the cold, but I'm not a. Yeah, I'm not going to. I didn't know you liked the cold. I'd rather jump out of an airplane than, than go do a double black diamond. You mean or, bungee? Or, I've already done that, or, but I mean like. Uh, what the fuck? Parachute out. Yes. Mm-hmm. For a second, I thought you were like, I'd rather kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> On a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, come see me uh, do the Gateway Tour. Uh, I'm all over um, Colorado, CarmenMorales.com for all of your Carmen Morales needs. Get uh, Take Carmen get skiing. Keys. Come see her in Colorado and take her skiing. Okay. <laughs> or inner tubing. Yeah. Because there's places closer to town that, that are just like for kids and families. That yeah. Just, that just... And, people partying yeah go do that i'm gonna live vicariously through you okay sounds good thanks guys you could stick a whole ribeye in one of your back pockets (laughs) like